Okay, looking here at pricing. So, quote here, a cynic is someone who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing, which is a good way to sum up this topic. Now, who said that? We have four options, J.K. Rowling, Oscar Wilde, Shakespeare, and Steve Jobs. So who do you think it is? So you can pause this, let's remove one wrong answer. It's not Steve Jobs. So out of these three, who do you think it is? Let's remove another wrong answer. Not J.K. Rowling. So is it either Shakespeare or Oscar Wilde? I wonder if you've got all three, you know, all wrong so far, but the final answer is it was Oscar Wilde. It's a good point there because what we're trying to teach in this part is it's about price is a nominal value you're given something, but it's all about value, right? So focus on value. Oh, bye bye, Oscar. Some quick stories here about pricing. Uh, one on the left is, I think I've read it so many times, but you know, someone has a central heating, middle of winter, it breaks down, they call out someone, you know, in the evening, and the guy comes out, so they're freezing, family's freezing, so the guy just comes up, looks at central heating, turns a screwdriver, that's it fixed. The guy, fantastic, that's wonderful. How much do I owe you? And the guy gives him his bill, a thousand pounds. How how would you justify a thousand pounds? You were only out for you know one minute, and then the guy says you know writes it down, breaks it down further, you know call out charge one hundred pounds, cost a screwdriver you know one pounds, but knowing what to do in the first place, where to put the screwdriver, nine hundred and whatever pounds it is of you know add VAT. So the idea is it's about the knowledge, not just the actual act of something, and that's an intangible. Another one there was um, just that guinea pig and it was stressed after about a week in my care. Um, so I took it to the, it was ill, took it to the vet and the vet, you know, gives me something, takes it overnight, turn the next day. And the thing is, when they asked how much, you know, and I, the guinea pig cost itself about £80. And so I had my money there and they said, oh, that was £95. You know, and it's a bit like the screwdriver one with the gas central heating, but... The fact is, if she'd said it was £20 or £30, I'd have handed the money over. If she said it was £50, I'd have been, what? That's about steep. But when it comes to pets, you know, you don't really put price on it. You know, and I was a bit stunned to pay over £90. But for some people, and if you've got a pet, you'll know that price is not important. Okay, if it's an ill pet, it's not, you know, not an issue. One down here is just about the uh, cast of The Walking Dead TV programme, uh, about the zombies. And it just basically the, the cast were relatively, you know, they didn't make that much money from it. You know, in some episodes like Friends, I think the star people there got like $1 million each an episode. But the reason why Friends was, the wages were low was because, well, in the nature of the programme, you know, you could be written off any week. So if you walked in and said, I demand, you know, $100,000 a week, yeah, fine. The next week you would find a zombie had attacked you and that was your dead. So... Wages are also the part of your price, the price of your labour, what you think you're worth. You might have left a job because you don't think you've been paid enough. Um, so these are the things here, all, all are price issues. This one here is about anyone who's travelled by train. The, uh, the Times found 42 fares ranging between six and £119 travel from London to Houston, so it's complicated. So sometimes price can be easy, other times it's very, very complicated, especially in the real. And of course you have ticket touts as well. This is another one. You know, and I think um, the, um, what's his name there, the Ed Sheeran, um, they they try to stop ticket touts from buying it because what happens is you know these things via these things via go go etc secondary markets or whatever they sell tickets and they add on the booking charge and it's extortionate and there's a, a big concern about this one of the times I was um it was Kasabian were playing the SECC and the ticket prices were sold out and all the touts were there and basically they had overestimated the market and so basically the concert had just started. Tickets that were, they were trying to sell maybe for £100, face value was £50, they were giving it for £5 because they had to get rid of them. And some people were waiting until the very end to see what they could get from the touts. So, you know, these are all pricing issues. 
this is one here that's you know it happens quite a bit but basically this guy um a drug which cost as little as 17 cents he bought it um when he acquired it and then he used the treatment of aids and cancer patients and hiked the cost from 13 dollars 50 to 750 dollars so sometimes there's a hidden price behind it and things like cancer drugs <clears throat> You know, an AIDS or any medication, you would you wouldn't really know the cost it's going into, but some people would take advantage of that. And I think the guy actually got jailed for another issue there. But pricing, you know, and this is why globally drugs can sell in different prices in different countries. What we're looking at here is basically bat value, right? So I mentioned earlier, price is just a number, but it's the benchmark against what your value is assessed. And what you're focusing on is the perceived benefits, right? So value is the benefits divided by price. So to give you an example, um, onions will probably be like 50 pence for you know, three onions approximately. Don't take me up on this. But you can buy a, um, frozen onions for one pound. Now, the thing is this, you might think, well, I can, you know, I'll just get the, the buy the onions are cheaper, but anyone who's ever cut onions, you know, and they make your eyes weep, etc. So you, for convenience, you may think, yes, it's worth it. Some people would say that's terrible value. Others, it's convenience. It just depends on what you think are the perceived benefits for quickness and avoiding, you know, being teary eyed. This one here is just to say about you know supermarkets, the yellow label. The link to the story will be on the, the, the website. And it's how basically that when you see it's a signal. Now, of course, price is people always say if the supermarket puts or any shop puts a price label on it, that is the price that has to be. Technically, it's just an invitation. It's saying, look, this is the price here. It's an invitation. So if you if people say if you if they marked a TV that was one thousand pounds and by mistake it was ten pounds. <clears throat> And you go up and you know it's a mistake and you insist they sell it to you for that it's not it's just an invitation but here it's a signal physically so you know you might be in a supermarket and you see that the yellow label or whatever out the corner of your eye and you just get there because that's that's what you want to do that's what you want to buy it for and you think it's value for money so the link here is just to have a story about this why is price important well in the market mix, everything else is a cost, right? So your product, your branding, your new products, you know, the promotion, all these things cost money. But this has an implication for revenue. So, okay, so you set the price affects the revenue. So who's responsible for setting prices in many organisations? Well, you would think it would be the marketing people, but that's not often the case. Truth is, it usually ends up with the accountants, and that's meant to be a stereotypical accountant there. Apologies. This accountant is very manly looking. Most accountants are not. <clears throat> um, so what is here is this is this is an issue where marketing people they, they say, oh, nothing to do with me. They might not have the responsibility for it, which is wrong, but it seems to be a fact of life. Now, one of the most significant issues in pricing what came in the UK. 1964, the abolition of resale price maintenance. Now, what happened up to this point, um, the manufacturer set the price. So the manufacturer would say, here's a tin of beans, you'll sell it for such and such. So the retailers, they, they would have to sell at the price they were told to sell it at. So they then compete on service and opening hours and convenience, etc. So that's why you had thousands and thousands of small shops. There was no incentive to have a bigger shop because there was no price differential. This took that, that away. And so in 1964, the UK signals the beginning of retail change. And this is where the supermarkets began to compete in price. And I think in the 60s, Tesco adopted a stack it high, uh, sell it low approach to pricing. And you can read more about it in this story here. And of course, now we have price comparisons and how many of you, you've compared you know, house insurance, car insurance, or holiday insurance, etc. All these things, you check the price, and you look for a better deal. So this is why significant changes within the pricing uh, environment. A key thing, obviously, in businesses is whether you price and non-price competition. So price competition is where you emphasize prices. It's a mainstay in your communications and your shops. You know, 
you match or beat the competitors' prices. That's why Aldi and Lidl, that's what they compete on. And EasyJ, right? Now, to compete effectively, a company should be the low-cost producer of the product. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they're always a low price. It's about value for money. So it's about being efficient and be able to deliver things. So you might get the some supermarkets would compete in a um, you know, price promotion basis, but others would be everyday low prices consistently from this. So you've got to decide if you're going to compete in price or non-price factors. And of course, for non-price competition, you know, you know, a Cartier watch. Waitrose don't compete in price, and yet in the last 10 years, their market share has grown despite not being the cheapest in Harrods. You know, so these are firms who say, yeah, price is important, but it's not what we compete on here. So they emphasize distinctive features, quality promotion. So right away, what we're saying, firms should decide, what, if they're competing in price, then they have to be efficient in doing this. This is just really the stages for establishing prices. If you look from left to right, you know, we're going to look at your objective. So what's your objective for price here? Then you look at what people can pay, what their ability to pay. You know, you look at what the demand might be for this. You look at the cost and the demand. This is your economic supply and demand and relationship. Look at the competition, right? And then you look at a basis for pricing and a strategy. So, because you know, you might put the strategy first, but so you look at your basis for pricing, which is not simple, right? And then determine a specific price. So, if you look at, you know, say, car manufacturers, all the different ranges, the factories, the they, they may have, and it's a global market, how they price complicated business. But the key thing here is the objectives. So what we'll be looking at is, is objectives, what the demand will be, the target market, and the competition. So this is just really, I think, the end here. It's just going to look at the next slide. It's factors affecting the price decision. So all the things that influence you, you know, it's your organisation objectives, you know, your own pricing objective, the cost you incur, other marketing mix variables, what people in the channel members expect, you know. So we'll come to all of these in the next few slides. Probably the main one is here is perceived value for money. Okay, so thanks for listening.